Hello, I'm Audrey Tang. I'm really happy to be here to share with you some thoughts around how Taiwan countered the coronavirus using the power of digital social innovation. Social innovation, that is to say, people who participate from all walks of life in order to publicly benefit the society, is the cornerstone of the Taiwan's collective intelligence response system, and it's really fast. Whereas many jurisdictions began countering coronavirus only this year, Taiwan started last year. Last December, when Dr. Li Wenliang, the PRC whistleblower, posted that there are new SARS cases, he gets inquiries and eventually punishments uh, from his local police institutions. But at the same time, the Taiwan equivalent of Reddit, the PTT board, has somebody with the name Nomo Repipe reposting Dr. Li Wenliang's whistleblowing. But instead of facing discipline, the head of the CDC immediately noticed this post and issued an order that says that all passengers flying from Wuhan to Taiwan need to start health inspections the very next day, the first day of 2020. And so this says two things. First, that the civil society trusts the government enough to talk about possible new SARS outbreaks um, in a public forum, and that the government trusts the citizens enough to take it seriously and treat it as if SARS has happened again, something we've always been preparing since 2003. And because of this open civil society, according to the Civicus Monitor, Taiwan is the most open society in the whole of Asia. We enjoy the same freedom of speech, the same freedom of assembly, of the press, and so on, as other liberal democratic countries, but with the emphasis on keeping an open mind to new novel ideas from the society. And this is why our schools and businesses still remain open today. So for example, Every day, our Central Epidemic Command Center holds a press conference, which is live streamed. We work with the journalist community. They answer all the questions from the journalist, and it's all live streamed. And because of this, whenever there's new ideas coming from the civil society, anyone can pick their phone and call 1922 and tell that idea to the CECC. For example, there was one day in April that a young boy that said they don't want to go to school because their schoolmates may laugh at him for wearing a pink medical mask. The very next day, everybody in the CECC press conference started wearing pink medical mask and making sure that everybody learns about gender mainstreaming, which is again a social innovation. So this kind of fast response builds trust between the government and the civil society. Another focus is fairness. For example, when we ramped up the facial mask production, making sure that everybody can use their national health insurance card to collect masks from nearby pharmacies, fairness is the guiding principle. So not only do we publish the stock level of all the pharmacies, but we actually publish it every three minutes. And that is why GovZero and many community contributors built more than 130 tools that enables people who prefer viewing maps or people with blindness who prefer to hear from voice assistants, as well as people who are uh, using the chatbot, like a line platform, which is very popular and so on, can get uh, the same inclusive access to the information about which pharmacists near them still have the mask. And because Taiwan has more than 99.9% of health coverage, people who show any symptom will then be able to take medical mask, go to a local clinic knowing that they will get treated fairly and without incurring any financial burden. And this also enabled people who make dashboards that lets people see that our supply is indeed growing, that we now can collect, if you're an adult, nine facial masks every two weeks or 10 if you are a child. And it shows us where in Taiwan do we have a oversupply or undersupply, and we change the pharmacies based on the uh, real feedback of the pharmacist so that their received supplies as well as the ordering system um, is also co-created with the whole of society. So based on the analysis, as you can see our premier smiling happily here, that is because we started working with convenience stores. So you can take the same NHI card to go there and collect your mask um, anytime, 24 hours a day, because there's many people working in municipality that have a longer working hour than pharmacists. And so it, before, when we only ration through pharmacists, they could miss the mask collection simply because they work too late uh, in the day. And so we ensure fairness of all kinds. And finally, I would like to stress that because it's a stressful time, people feel anxious. There's a lot of panic buying, a lot of conspiracy theories. In Taiwan, our counter disinformation strategy is based on the idea of humor over rumor. So when there is a panic buying of tissue papers, there was a rumor that says it's the same material as facial mask. And there was a panic buying. The same premier, smiling in the previous light, now shows his bottom and says uh, in a very large print that we only have one pair of buttock itch. So meaning that we don't need to uh, 
uh, panic buy tissue papers. And then it shows a very clear table saying the facial masks are produced using Taiwanese materials and the tissue paper are produced using South American materials. And this went absolutely viral. And because of that, uh, the panic buying of tissue paper is died down within a day or two. And finally, we found out that person who spread the rumor at the first place was the tissue paper reseller. And this is not just a single shot um, point in the social media. Every single CECC daily press conference gets translated by the Ministry of Health and Welfare spokesdog, or Zong Chai, uh, the dog CEO, uh, that translates social distancing, hand sanitation rules, uh, remembering uh, to uh, pay your pre-orders, and so on, uh, all into very cute dog memes. And because these goes viral, we make sure that our humor, our factual humor, spreads faster than rumor. And this is how we make sure that Taiwanese people still feel calm and collected even during the pandemic. So I only have five minutes, so this is all I can contribute within five minutes, but please feel free to read more in Taiwan Can Help That US. Thank you for listening.